we did see that uh, you know 2,500 in comparison to 1,500 units improved significantly improved um, body weight gain and we, and also uh, improved feed conversion ratio by about three points. Uh, we also saw a reduction in mortality uh, by about 1.5 percent as well. And what was actually interesting also was this uh, mine also told that I talked about earlier. Welcome to our another episode of Poultry Nutrition Black Belt. I'm our host, Dr. Pratima Adekari from Mississippi State University. And we have a new guest in our episode, Dr. Bayo Sokali. Uh, Bayo is from DBSF company and he's a technical lead for feed enzymes and performance of ingredients. So um, Dr. Sokali, welcome to our episode. Thank you, Pratima. It's good to be here. Uh, nice to see you again. As always, it's great to see you. Um, I would like to start with a little bit about you and your background and then your role in the company. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, maybe starting from the very beginning, um, uh, I grew up on the farm. I always like to tell people that. Uh, it's uh, quite quite fun. Um, and, you know, I really going to vet school, I kind of knew exactly where I wanted to be, uh, what I wanted to do. Uh, my dad uh, is a poultry vet as well, and uh, you know we had a um, meat size uh, layer egg op- layer egg operation uh, when I was growing up, and I remember just going to the farm with him, and, and so that kind of set the course for me and the path for me to be uh, to do what I need wanted to do. And after uh, vet school, I went to grad school at Pilia, Mississippi State, and uh, did my masters and PhD under the Peebles, um, and you know joined the industry after that. So. I've been around the industry for quite a bit since 2013 and uh, enjoy what I do every day. Yeah. Yeah, that's great to know about your background and, and you are here now. And uh, it's really exciting that you want to be around animals and then this uh, around the animals and you are doing a part of that. And the nutrition is a part of that to feed the animals, right? Uh, that's great. And you're one of our alumni, Mississippi State. So, yay, we're proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Um, as a company, as some of the works that you did, what are some exciting um, areas and research work that this company does uh, regarding to the enzyme? Yeah, yeah. So uh, w- within our division, uh, uh, we've you know we've basically uh, split up to feed enzymes uh, and feed performance ingredients. So um, in my role uh, within North America, I support. Um, uh, have a technical support role for uh, for feed enzymes and feed performance ingredients. Um, so that includes a flagship uh, phytase product, Natural Force Me, uh, which you know it was launched somewhere around 2015. Prior to that, 30 years ago, of course, we launched the first phytase on the market, uh, which was Natural Force, and then we've launched a second generation phytase since then. Uh, but in addition to that, also we got um, an NSP enzyme, so xylanase. Uh, Blue kinase and uh, more recently to our portfolio also added in mananis. Um, so I support I support all the enzyme portfolio that we have uh, the enzyme products within that portfolio and of course also what we call the feed um, uh, additives or well, the feed performance ingredient that also also is within my responsibility. Um, so I you know provide support uh, for uh, um, sales folks uh, customer support. And also do a lot of applied research in, in pretty much everything in between that. With science-led solutions that are sustainable, proven, and effective, BASF helps you tackle the challenges of poultry nutrition. We offer high-quality feed ingredients that enable a more sustainable production and help you achieve your animal performance targets. We call it the science of sustainable feed that succeeds. Yeah, that's great. And in fact, I also got an opportunity to, my lab got an opportunity to work with uh, your company with a, a feed additive, one of the feed additive, and also the Natifos, which is a phosphorus source um, last year. So that was, that was a great experience. Um, so um, a few weeks ago, um, I'm sure you have watched the episode with Dr. Peter Adder from um, DBSF company in Europe side as a global side of it. And we discuss a little bit. I know it's a nine minute. We cannot cover everything, but we're trying to 
trying to delve dive into some phosphorus and beyond phosphorus of the uh, of the phytase and superdose. Um, would you like to add um, something about it, uh, especially on the superdose side of the phytase? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so the good thing is, uh, Peter is 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 a global research manager, so he sees a lot of this uh, research that we do on a global scale. Um, I'm more focused within North America, primarily U.S. Um, and so I have the opportunity to also talk to customers on a daily basis and and see what is being done and, and new things that that you know on the production side that they're looking at as far as nutrition is concerned. So yeah, so that that's a good thing. Um, and and yes, we we've, we've been looking at um, you know just beyond phosphorus. Uh, what what else can phytase do? We know traditionally that phytase uh, in, increase uh, the availability of phosphorus in the diet. Um, and, and this is where most of the matrix values that, um, that are out there comes from. But, but beyond that, uh, we've also seen that when, when we go to these high levels of phytase in the diet up to 1500, um, even more recently, 2500, there is more to, to be had as far as phytase is concerned, right? And, and we know that it not only uh, release phosphorus, it also releases other minerals that are uh, bound to the phytate molecule, the IP6, and, and you know, reduce uh, endogenous losses, uh, you know, release of amino acid. And, and the other part that most people also don't really talk about is the other beneficial metabolite like myonositol is also released. Uh, because when you use this high levels, um, the, the goal is to have a near degradation of this uh, phytate molecule, right? So not just IP6, uh, but IP6 and its metabolites as well, and then eventually releasing some of these beneficial metabolites that can also support your performance in the birds. That's, that's great. I mean, superdose is not, although it's not a new concept, uh, we are, we have also not found out whole picture of it. So it's great that a company like you um, trying to investigate more on, on the customer side and also university like us. Uh, that's great. Um, I know you also kind of mentioned off here about uh, a data that you want to talk about and that you did a research study with your customer. Uh, would you, would you want to talk about it? What was the result? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, th this was more recent. Um, so we had a uh, we had an opportunity to look at uh, in a field study uh, to look at uh, the difference in response between 1500 units of phytase versus 2500 units of phytase. And what we did was, you know, we took a two pronged approach in this in this study. Uh, we set some birds on the floor pens, and then we put some birds also in pet houses. So we had two houses per treatment for that. Um, so for the 1,500, two houses, for the 2,500, two houses. And then we had a total of 48 cages for flopping studies, right? Our goal was to see if the two go in the same direction as far as the, as the outcome uh, of, of this trial. And that's exactly what we saw. Um, we did see that, uh, you know, 2,500 in comparison to 1,500 units improved significantly improved um, body weight gain. And, we, and also uh, improved feed conversion ratio by about three points. Uh, we also saw a reduction in mortality uh, by about 1.5% as well. And what was actually interesting also was this uh, myonositol that I talked about earlier, uh, we took birds, I think we had about a total of 48 birds um, in total, and we collected blood samples at day 25 to look at you know, plasma myonositol concentration at day 25. And what we found was between two groups, 1500 versus 2500, there was a higher uh, plus node concentration of myonositol in 2500, significantly higher than the 1500, which tells you that you know it, there is a near degradation of the IP6, right? And some of these efficient metabolites are there. But what also was quite interesting, which we probably will, will need to delve into, was that this concentration was different in males and females. So we had a higher concentration of myonositol in the plasma in the females uh, versus, versus males. I mean, I have some theory why that is, but you know, that's that's something that we can of course visit we visit about at some some other time. But but you know, th this is a, this is one of those uh, trials that you know we we do uh, and we see that there is benefit with high doses of phytase, even beyond the fifteen hundred now that is being used. Um, as the baseline, I think most producers that I've spoken with are probably going a little higher than that, up to 2,500 in some cases. 
Yeah, it's good that you have these um, like beyond 1500 and you have used up to 2500 because um, it's not that far. Like maybe last two years ago, we did a study where we use our super dose supposed to be 1500. And uh, looking into the data, we kind of somewhere felt like maybe it's not giving a max out of it. I mean, we did not, we saw some great things there. We already even published a paper out of it, but then it's always more to find in the, I guess, the invention side of it, the discovery side of it. So it's great to know and uh, where the industry, the fight is industry is going. Yeah. I mean, there is more to be had about, you know, what what else can fight is do. Uh, we're using this super omega doses um, and, and, you know, the cost of enzymes now allows us to be able to do that. Um, and there is plenty of return investment to be had. Thank you for sharing those information. It's great. Um, at the very last part of our uh, program, I would like to ask you a little bit different. Would you like to, I'm sure you don't you have some free time when you have those some free time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I got two kids. Uh, they're 10 and 8 uh, between, you know, uh, running them around for different activities. Uh, my son is really into basketball now. So, we, you know, we've go out and play and, and, and he's got a, a, a little group he plays with and, and things like that. And my daughter, uh, yeah, they're competitive and active. So uh, that takes a bit of my time. And, you know, we're, we're very, uh, uh, we, we, we like to travel as a family. Whenever we have the opportunity, we do travel. Um, and I think also the other thing is we just stay home and play board games. Uh, and they're pretty competitive people on my, on my, in my family. And, and that would be <laughs> really, really, <laughs> Sounds really pretty, but we enjoy spending time together with family and just playing board games. Yeah, that's good. Competition always makes uh, leads to a fun time. Yeah, yes, I guess. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for coming here and having you. Get, we're glad to have you in our program. And uh, thank you, Dr. Sokeli. Thank you. Good to see you again. Bye.